Hey guys, welcome to another lesson of Pharmacy Tech Study Guide. This is your pharmacist Sidra and in today's lecture, we're going to talk about some of the most common categories of over-the-counter medications that you should know as a pharmacy technician. I will be explaining all of these categories with examples, some of the common brands and generics, common side effects, uses, interactions. Just I'm going to cover some, some of the basics, nothing too complicated, just enough information that you need to know as a pharmacy technician. Now, you may ask that why do I need to know all of this information? Because when pharmacy is supposed to do all the consultations, make all the recommendations, then why do I need to know all of this information as a pharmacy technician? Well, the basic answer or the simple answer is that as a pharmacy technician, you should have all of this information just so you can be more vigilant in terms of patient cares. You're able to direct the patient in the right direction should they ask you for any help. Like for instance, for over-the-counter medications, if a patient comes up to you, which yes, you are the first point of contact for um, customers, they'll actually see you first before they see the pharmacist, right? So if they come up to you and ask you, let's say, point them in the right direction for Sudafed or let's say Tylenol or decongestants. And if you don't know what a Sudafed or decongestants are, then you won't be able to direct them, right? Also, if you uh, don't know what are the basics of Sudafeds, like for instance, you don't know Sudafed is contraindicated in high blood pressure patients or heart patients, then you wouldn't be able to point such interaction or contraindication to the pharmacist should a patient, should a high blood pressure or heart patient come up to you and ask for a Sudafed product. So the bottom line is that you have to have all of this information so you can better assist the pharmacist in patient safety because at the end of the day pharmacists and technician as a team work towards patient safety and care all right now that you know the importance of having the knowledge of over-the-counter medications buckle up and be ready to take notes i will be going through these categories pretty quick because we don't want to waste time this could be a pretty long video so i'm not going to cover everything in one video i will be uh, having three parts of the video so be sure to check all of them but for now let's get into the first most commonly used category of over-the-counter medications and that one is pain medications or pain relievers they are also known as analgesics and they're classified into several categories based on their mechanism of action. But the two main ones that I'm gonna talk here are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, and the other one would be Tylenol because they often are comparable and are used together. Um, now, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory are the NSAIDs, and they work by inhibiting the um, prostaglandins, which are basically the chemicals which are produced at the site of uh, pain or inflammation. Now, they're effective in the control of your pain, fever, or any swelling, uh, but the main thing that you wanna remember with these medications is that they have a risk of um, gastrointestinal side effects like ulceration and bleeding. Also recently, there are uh, risks of cardiovascular disease associated with these medications. So something to keep in mind if you uh, see a patient with cardiovascular problems or if you see a patient who has ulcer or has like stomach uh, bleeding issues, those patients should steer clear of these medications. Some of the common ones that you will see over the counter are um, Motrin, Aleve. Motrin is the name brand for ibuprofen and Aleve is the name brand for naproxen. Now, Motrin as a prescription strength is available from 600 milligrams to 800, but over the counter, you will see 200 milligrams of Motrin. So this is important to remember when a patient, for instance, doesn't have insurance, 
and they're prescribed, let's say, uh, 800 milligrams of ibuprofen that they have to take up to three times a day, for instance, right? But they have no insurance. And instead of offering them the cash price of prescription, you have to let the patient know that, hey, ibuprofen 200 milligram is available over the counter. So if you discuss with the pharmacist, then the pharmacist will be able to recommend you how much of the um, over-the-counter 200 milligram ibuprofen you can take to get up to your prescription strength. Because sometimes um, in some of these retail pharmacies like Costco, CVS, Walgreens, they'll have a better deal on over-the-counter medications going on. Often it'll be a big jar would be very cost effective or could be like buy one, get one free, something like that. And they will end up paying way less money on that over-the-counter medication compared to buying the prescription medication on cash price because often with prescription medications, dispensing fee is also charged. And this is another thing to remember that as a technician, it's mandatory on you that you offer patient uh, with other uh, you know, cost-effective alternatives of their uh, prescription medication. The other category of the pain medication is Talon, it's not really a category, but I do compare it to uh, the NSAIDs because this is another commonly used over-the-counter uh, medication in terms of pain control. It is literally prescribed left and right in pharmacy in combination with other medications. And the name brand for um, this medication is Tylenol. Now this one works by inhibiting the synthesis of prostaglandins in the central nervous system. Uh, prostaglandins, like I said earlier, are the chemicals that your body produces at the site of pain, infection, or any tissue damage. One thing to remember with Tylenol is that it does help control pain or fever, but it does not help with inflammation. So it's not an anti-inflammatory drug. Okay, another thing is that the medication can result in a uh, potential uh, liver toxicity especially when it is taken at very higher dose and since this medication is readily available uh, it's important that we educate patients on the safety and the risk potential of the medication because it's available over the counter so yes it is relatively safe but it has potential risks um so patients shouldn't treat it like uh, like a Tylenol candy which often unfortunately is the perception for this medication okay so next up I want to talk about um, aspirin now aspirin is an over-the-counter NSAID and the reason I did not mention uh, it with the other NSAIDs like uh, ibuprofen and Aleve is because this medication normally is not used for pain control over the counter uh, although it does has the pain control and inflammation and fever control properties but mainly this is used as a blood thinner to prevent blood clots um, aspirin can cause gastrointestinal side effects such as ulceration and bleeding and so it should be used in caution with uh, in within patients who have certain medical conditions like ulcers or bleeding disorders um, but like i said mainly aspirin is used as a blood thinner so you'll see baby aspirin sold over the counter and that's 81 milligram this dose helps in uh, blood clot prevention so all of these patients who um, who are on these blood thinners or who have cardiovascular issues, they are often seen on this dose of baby aspirin, 81 milligram once a day. But you will see uh, 325 milligrams of aspirin dosed over the counter as well and mainly in Excedrin migraine, which contains three active ingredients. And that's your acetaminophen, aspirin and caffeine. Now here's another thing I want to point out here. You see how Excedrin is a combination of acetaminophen, aspirin and caffeine. Now this Excedrin medication is a fancy combination of these basic medications that you, you can get over the counter. Pretty cheap, right? So if 
a patient is like, okay, this, let's say Excedrin is like $25, $30 and cannot afford it, then we should be able to educate patient that, hey, you might have Tylenol at home, aspirin at home, or if not aspirin, Tylenol at home for sure. Just you get that, just use 325 milligrams of that, buy um, aspirin and drink a cup of coffee and that should be your DYI Excedrin. Um, now, of course, this is something that as a technician, you won't be able to consult the patient, but you should be able to, uh, you know, direct the patient to the pharmacist that, uh, so the pharmacist can educate the patient of this option. And see, as a technician, if you don't know what Excedrin is, that Excedrin is the combination of three basic over-the-counter items, then you won't be able to direct the patient to pharmacist. So the pharmacist can educate patient about a much cost effective and favorable alternative. Okay. All right. Next, I want to talk about the topical pain relievers. Um, now, this category includes creams, gels, ointments that are basically applied to the skin surface to relieve any pain or inflammation. Uh, some of the examples could be menthol and um, you'll also see capsaicin. These are topical uh, agents. Um, both of these agents are often used uh, or recommended in shingle pain. Capsaicin has this chili pepper like uh, sensation when it is applied on the skin. So something to keep in mind. But the thing is, as that uh, the medication shows its effect, that pepper or burning sensation uh, kind of goes away and it does help relieve the pain. Menthol, I personally don't think it is very effective because it's just like, a soothing agent because often the pain is associated with redness and burning and menthol kind of soothes out that redness and burning and other over-the-counter great uh, topical option to help relieve pain would be Voltaren gel Voltaren gel is the um, name brand for diclofenac now this used to be prescription uh, a couple of years ago and then they uh, changed it to the over-the-counter item and this is like a hot selling item a lot of people still don't know how effective it is so i personally love voltaren gel and if you see the box it is branded as for arthritis pain but it helps for minor pain minor sprains inflammation because it is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Because it is an NSAID, it's something to keep in mind. If a patient is using Voltaren and prescription uh, NSAIDs, then we have to identify it as a duplication and the patient must be directed to the pharmacist so the pharmacist can um, check for uh, possible duplicate therapies. All right, next up, I want to talk about the topical patches and then we will call it good for this video because I don't want the video to be too long. So topical patches, you can see uh, mostly pain topical patches, pain relieving topical patches, but you'll also see some of these, um, you know, like a nicotine patch. Uh, well, I guess I, I'll, I'll talk about nicotine patches um, in a little bit too, but let's first talk about the pain relieving topical pat patches. Now, why you wanna use pain relieving topical patches? Because you can, just like your topical uh, ointments and creams, you can apply them directly onto the painful area of the body, and it's going to provide more localized effect. It's not gonna have a lot of systemic absorption, therefore you cannot experience a lot of those systemic side effects like you would experience with the oral medications, for instance, you know, if you take ibuprofen and you have stomach problems, uh, then you can, uh, one of the ways to overcome that side effect, use like a topical uh, diclofenac patch, for instance, or apply a topical diclofenac or Voltaren gel cream on the painful area. And that would bypass the systemic uh, side effects that a pill could cause. Now, some of the common topical patches that you can get over the counter would be lidocaine patch. Now, here's an interesting thing about this patch that lidocaine 4% patch is available over the counter and 5% patch is prescription only. 
lidocaine patch is a numbing agent that lidocaine is a numbing agent so you can basically apply it on the painful area and it would numb the pain a lot of times the patches cannot be cut because of rapid uh you know dumping of the drug um, on the skin surface and risk of potential toxicity but lidocaine is one of the patches which can be cut um and it has to be applied 12 hours on and 12 hours off now one of the important things to remember with the lidocaine patch is that um, it's 12 hours on and 12 hours off so when you type the directions in the prescription uh, you should add that on the directions because most of the prescriptions may just read that apply one patch on the painful area once a day but that may be implied as once 24 hours for the patient right they may leave it on for 24 hours but we have to educate the patient that this cannot be left on the skin for 24 hours it has to be 12 hours on and um, off for 12 hours another common uh, over-the-counter uh, patch that i want to talk about is salon pass now this patch has menthol camphor which are both cooling agents and it also has a salicylate okay so the other over-the-counter patch i want to talk about would be nicotine patch uh, these are nicotine replacement patches these are used uh, for smoking cessation and uh, these patches are just applied topically mostly on the back of the shoulder and must not be used at nighttime because nicotine can cause insomnia right so the patch um, should be applied first thing in the morning and taken off in the evening or at night time one of the things to remember with the topical patches is that they can cause uh, irritation or redness of the skin like a little rash on the affected area and so what we can do is um, what alternate the site of application for the patch one secondly if the if the rash or redness still persists then just use an over-the-counter um, benadryl uh, or a topical steroid like a cortisone to help relieve with that itchiness or reaction from the patch and i will be talking about the over-the-counter antihistamines or anti-itch or rash medications in the next part so do join me in the next part and, and we will be discussing some of the other over-the-counter categories hey guys if you found value in this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and family and remember to subscribe to stay up to date on new weekly videos